wide in the middle. Hi hey guys, doing? So I spent quite a bit of time with this rifle today, testing different stuff that it likes, uh, even some Ely team, and um, played with the shims. I'm actually at the blue shim now. Started out with the black and went up one. And the group performance compared to last week has been absolutely shocking. And um, yeah, I'm going to measure some of these groups at home, but this gun uh, hung with, or maybe even in some instances, outshot the 455, which to me is not surprising because I've had these before and they're capable of incredible accuracy. And that's without the dialed in tuner screw. That's just the tuner screw set on its highest setting since day one, like all the way in. So, um, You can see the bolt is just as smooth as it was before. Maybe, maybe slightly more bolt close effort, but nothing. Nothing like approaching like a match chamber gun. Actually, this stuff right here. This Canada match stuff that it showed really a lot of promise with last uh, last session shot uh, as well as this is as the Ely team and like it is it's about eight bucks a box or so around here so it's super inexpensive and today I'm facing a different set of challenges you can say, tell the sun is um, right in my face so um, it's not an easy shooting session today but it's the time I had I actually had to come out today to zero the 455 for tomorrow's ORPS match so I'm just kind of doing double duty and the sun is just across the trees and it'll get a little bit easier but of course I'm all about done for the day doing this so It's funny, the RWS didn't shoot uh, crazy well this week with the black shim, um, but it shot very well or tighter with the blue shim. So it's interesting to see how that works, and that's all the time I have for today. So I'll, I'll show you those differences later, and you guys can have a look on what shim difference um, it is. The, if I get it out here the black versus the blue um, it's not a big difference and like you I don't really really think I can feel it on bolt closure the difference between the two I mean like you can certainly feel that there's a shim in there compared to the stock, but um, not like I would say it's not even as much as uh, like an MTR 457 barrel like a match chamber bolt closure nothing like that it's still like it feels almost like an Anschutz 54 closure, like just smooth. It doesn't feel like you're forcing anything. It still can be fast. That might be the best uh, group of the day, <laughs> kind of semi-rapid firing this, and they are uh, uh, 
So I'm super pleased with the results with these shims, but uh, it's been kind of my experience with these based on the kind of open headspace. On them. So um, I don't have much more time here to, to, to install another one and see what I can do. So I'm going to have to kind of just interpret these readings today. And of course, you know, some of the results might change with a tuner screw as well. It's funny, there was one flyer in that one about, uh, I don't know, maybe half inch below the group, but otherwise that second group was great as well. So, you know, just this typical ammo with the flyers. Anyway, I'm going to pause this one here. I'm going to go back home and, and measure some of these groups and uh, and show you guys how it uh, did today. But otherwise, uh, performance, ejection, extraction, ignition, feeding was 100% the same as before. Um, there was run round that I short stripped. But the gun itself was absolutely flawless. And let me show you some of the carnage. I don't know if you can make that out, but absolute carnage today with the amount that I fired. So anyway, I'm going to leave this one here, and I'll measure them up, and I'll catch you guys uh, back at the house. Hello, Rimfire friends. Back at the house, and I quickly wanted to recap some of the groups with you guys after going to the range today and uh, you know quickly documenting some of the results here. I say quickly but it really wasn't because it was kind of back and forth with the CZ455. I have an ORPS match tomorrow so I was um, zeroing that at different distances and making sure my dope's good for tomorrow. So this believe it or not was secondary but I still wanted to get some kind of like some inf information down and uh, do the best job I could with seeing and shooting uh, it against the same ammo I shot last week. So conditions again were, were far from ideal. It was packed again. Um, I was dealing with uh, not only some wind, but also a blaring sun right in my face <laughs> due to the situation of my bench and the time of year sun. Anyway, so some of the some of the um, the groups were very challenging for me because it was pretty hard to see the target. Um, I actually had a quite a large piece of paper taped to my scope um, to try and help for a sunshade, which worked pretty good. But anyway. So I'll quickly say that I started out shooting with the black shim based on my measurements and I shot uh, most of the day's groups with the black and then I decided last minute to switch out to the blue because um, I kind of had a hunch and just shoot some of this because this seemed to be one of the rifle's most consistent choices last week and so I wanted to share with you guys my experience with it today. Um, so let's get into that. So I started with the black and then I switched to the blue right at the end. So first let me recap some of the groups from last week and let's not focus on too much here because it was quite inconsistent of course and I, and I just wanted to get a baseline for things. But we have for example SNB Canada Match and for the most part SNB Canada Match which I mentioned was a great choice hovered around let's say half an inch for the groups I shot and then RWS I said it was rifle match but it was actually this target rifle I made a mistake. So 404 and um, there's another one here, 464. So, you know, like we're, you know, in the fours there. And there was a couple other ones I tested. There's some more down here, some more rifle match. And the best group here was 0.493. So we're in the fours there. And then I tested some Elite Team. And I mentioned that the groups were good, but we had some flaws, right? And I was a little bit disappointed. So um, that was something I wanted to investigate a little bit further. And these are not Elite Team. These are, it was due to the, my other shooters sharing my paper today. So anyway, I wanted to go over that with you guys quickly. So these are today's groups. So this is that SNB Canada match stuff. And you can tell right away there's an improvement with, this is with the black shim, okay? So last week's were, I'm getting that in there. Right? The bottom row in red, sorry, the red is last week's and the black is this week's. Okay, you can see there's quite a difference there. There's quite um, there's quite a bit of infor information there to glean from those targets. Um, today's group, for example, like look at this group. That's that I measured five shots there, 
but four are into ridiculous, kind of like the Ely team was with this flyer. So it's some in, in, in interesting information for sure. This one over here as well, this 0.396, like that's ridiculous. What a beautiful group. So that's that's quite encouraging to see, and that's with the black shim, like I mentioned. The other thing to mention is I, I started out shooting uh, this RWS target rifle, and this was my fouling group, of course, because I go from left to right. And um, so this would be my, you can see where this was the first shot, and it gradually tightened up as I went. So I didn't even bother measuring it, of course. And then you can see that this group was kind of so-so. And then we popped into this group and it was kind of so-so. And like, I didn't bother measuring it because at the time I was like, oh, it's not really shooting that good today. But that's the interesting thing about mods is sometimes it shoots good and you change something and it doesn't shoot good. So that's what rim fires are all about. But I didn't bother measuring. I had some SK uh, rifle match out today. And typically uh, SK is a Bruno and CZ's best friend. And of course it didn't disappoint. Uh, this was the Fallon group, believe it or not. Um, although they both have an oily coating, so or lube. So anyway, I was pretty happy with the way SK Rifle Match was shooting. Then I switched to Ely Team with the Black Shim, and my results were very interesting. Despite the difficult conditions, I was getting some pretty good groups. Now, uh, of course, you'd expect that from a, you know an expensive match ammo, which it is, but those groups are really good. That's an excellent group. They're all pretty good. Um, maybe not as tight as they were last week, but they were more consistent. So that was super promising when it came from the Ely team from last week because they were tight, but I had these flyers and I had the opposite today. They weren't as tight, but I didn't really have the flyers. So I like where that's going for sure. Um, then I switched because I was thinking about this ammo long and hard. I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to do what I didn't really plan on doing. And I switched out the shim to the one up, which would be the blue shim. Uh, yep, the blue shim. And I shot this row. Now this, you'll see, is a larger group at one inch because the, the ammo up above wasn't the same. So this is like my fouling group. But look at the improvement in groups. A 0 0.241 after a shim change. So right away, this was kind of shooting like it was last week. And then I had an empty spot up here and I shot this group. 0.339. So that's a dramatic difference with a shim change from an ammo with the shim below it that was shooting, meh, not as good maybe as last week, or maybe very similar, not 100%. Same lot, same everything, same brick. So it's not a difference in ammo. But this, with a, a very low quality ammunition, it's about 10 bucks a box here in Canada. Uh, that's great. Like you'd expect that from a team. And let, like some of these, I was playing around with a couple of different things, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But I'm going to show you this one. That's shocking. That's an amazing group. That was shot with Ely team. That's a nice group too. There are several nice groups on this paper, much more so than my groups unshimmed. Yes, I did have some nice groups. But I feel overall the groups are nicer. And I got a lot of information. And unfortunately, my time at the range is done. I had to bomb home because I got to get ready for tomorrow's match and that sort of thing. But it gives me a lot to think about because this black shim suddenly changed this to how I was hoping it would perform. So the next range session will feature more of the black shim. And keep in mind, of course, that this, this torque setting here, I haven't monkeyed with yet, the tuner setting. It's still all the way in, it's the tightest setting. And so when, it find, when I find an ammo it likes, I will start playing with that. So there's still more dialing in to do. But I mentioned in my video ahead of this one where I was actually shooting it, that this rifle with some groups and some ammunition hung with the 455 with the IBI. And I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that because that's the rifle that I know and love in the Bruno Model 4. So anyway, a little bit of food for thought today to think about. Like... This rifle's from 1957. <laughs> and keep in mind, I'll just throw this in there. We forgot, not free-floated. But anyway, any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Whole bunch more information to glean from this and I, I really look forward to uh, going shooting some more groups. But anyway, any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. If not, I will catch you guys at the next one.